Meat prices soaring across the country, but farmers and ranchers say they're hurting too. Tonight, we talk with the White House about a fix. And the nation's highest court taking up COVID vaccine mandates with the president's plan to require vaccines now in flux. Details ahead. Your Pair HD News starts right now. Connecting the Brazos Valley, this is KRHD News. Happy Friday, everyone. I'm Hallie Jones. Meat prices seeing price increases, but the top meat packing companies are some of the only ones to get a cut of the profits. Now the Biden administration seeks ways to support independent ranchers and farmers. Carrie HD News reporter Brittany DeFran has more on their plan for the Brazos Valley and our agriculture industry. Inflation impacting industries and products across the board, but now the president taking matters into his own hands. But will his efforts trickle down to helping the right people? One longtime Brazos Valley rancher says so far the benefits of inflation are nowhere in sight. We're not seeing a gain at the local cell barns or on the rail or anything like that. It's more of the packers, the one that's seeing all the inflation and prices and seeing all the gains. We've yet to see that. We've yet to see that trickle down effect. Now the Biden administration plans to step in in hopes of helping the agriculture industry, especially smaller producers like those in the Brazos Valley. Well, three primary goals with reference to our efforts. One is to improve farmer income. Secondly, is to make sure that consumers have choice and competition for their consuming dollar. And third, to build a more resilient food system. Some ranchers have turned to other ways to get some extra cash. They've done some of that privately feeding, privately marketed, uh, you know, farm fresh to table. But the White House says it hopes to change the status quo by putting this action plan in place. And the result uh, of doing all of that and providing the capital and providing uh, support for workforce development will be that farmers have more, more opportunities to sell their livestock into more markets. Local farmers and ranchers say plans like that from the White House are good on paper, but they need help now. We're where it starts, so we're the first on the totem pole, and usually it always ends up that all when it helps and, you know, we get the government to step in and help, it always starts at the top, and we're at the very bottom. So it always seems like we're the last one to ever see it. The White House says it will dedicate a billion dollars in American Rescue Plan funds to help independent processors. In Brian, Brittany DeFran, Care HD News. There's a lot of talk about solar going around with sales people across Texas selling to homeowners, but is the push to go green really worth it? Here's Rebecca Fiedler in a small Texas town tonight with more on the real cost for solar. A new energy opportunity is here for Hearn. This Tuesday, Hearn City Council passed a solar energy buyback ordinance to encourage citizens seeking to switch to solar. The ordinance states that Hearn residents who install solar panels on their home can receive 4.8 cents per kilowatt hour for any excess energy storage. Basically, whatever extra power the homeowner doesn't use, they can sell to the city. Hearn officials say that power will then be used by the city as they meet the energy needs of their own municipal utility customers. The consumer needs to be aware of what contract he or she is signing. Uh, who owns the panels? Who's responsible for the upkeep? Is the electricity all on your side of the meter and you get to use it? Or does it go out into the grid and then you, you have to shunt it back? Energy expert Ed Hurst suggests that while solar panel installations can be beneficial to homeowners and earn them some money over time, it's critical that the buyer beware and make sure their installation contract states that they own the energy and solar panels, not a third party. At 6 o'clock, we'll expand more on the pros and cons of solar panels on your home. Reporting in Hearn, Rebecca Fiedler, KRHD News. The father of a 14-year-old accused of shooting and killing three teens in Garland made a court appearance for a bond hearing today. Police say 33-year-old Richard Acosta drove his son Abel to a convenience store the day after Christmas. Surveillance video shows him walking into the store, then getting back in his truck before police say his son shot and killed three teenagers and hurt a fourth. Two weeks later, Abel Acosta is still on the run. 
Governor Abbott is gearing up for a campaign season. The Texas Tribune reports Abbott is planning to make 60 campaign stops in under two months. The stops come ahead of the Republican primary on March 1st before the general election, which is, will likely be a battle between him and Beto O'Rourke. Abbott is set to announce his bid for a third term in the Rio Grande Valley this weekend. Texas Senator Ted Cruz apologizing for his comments about the January 6th Capitol riots. The Texas Tribune says Cruz called the riot a violent terrorist attack on the Capitol where we saw the men and women of law enforcement risk their lives to defend the men and women who serve in the, this Capitol. But after being slammed by TV pundits the fellow conservatives and fellow conservatives, Cruz went on Tucker Carlson tonight. He called his words sloppy and frankly dumb. Cruz now insisting he was referring only to the rioters who attacked police during the breach. While a number of companies and institutions are requiring COVID vaccines, not every business is doing it. It's why President Biden wants his vaccine mandate to take effect next month. But a Supreme Court hearing is standing in his way. Our Joe St. George takes a closer look. The pandemic this January continues to surge. More than 103,000 people are currently hospitalized with COVID-19, according to the Department of Health and Human Services, a number not seen in more than four months. But wherever you live or however your town is doing, you will be impacted by what happens after a Supreme Court hearing Friday. This continues to be a pandemic of the unvaccinated. That's when President Biden's vaccine mandate is heard at the Supreme Court. Leaders in 27 states say the law is unconstitutional and violates freedoms. They want the conservative leaning court to strike it down. As a reminder, the president wants, beginning February 9th, every private business with at least 100 employees to mandate vaccines or implement rigorous testing. Fines could be $14,000 per violation. Additionally, his administration wants to mandate every health care worker who works at a hospital that accepts federal funds to get the vaccine. How justices will rule is difficult to predict because so far this pandemic, they have struck down some public health orders but allowed others to continue. For instance, state vaccine mandates for health care workers in New York were allowed and they also allowed a mandate at the University of Indiana to go ahead. But those were not federal health orders, which the Supreme Court hasn't been afraid to strike down. Last year, justices ruled the CDC overstepped its authority by banning evictions. At the center of all of this is the authority of the relatively unknown government organization, OSHA, which was created in 1970. The Biden administration believes existing law gives the agency the authority to enforce vaccine mandates. Regardless of what happens at the Supreme Court, the president is losing support among members of Congress regarding the vaccine mandate. Currently, a majority in the U.S. Senate opposes the mandate. On Capitol Hill in Washington, I'm Joe St. George. This weekend could be the time to start cashing in on discounts at stores thanks to supply chain delays. Retail experts say items are arriving now that were really intended to be on shelves in October, November and December. I think that retailers are going to uh, struggle and uh, do everything possible to be sure that their inventories are completely current as they get clobbered with all this spring merchandise whose deliveries they normally would stage throughout the first and second quarter that for the last several months they've been attempting to get delivered early. Retail expert Mark Cohen says you can expect discounts well above what we typically see this month because of the need to clear out inventory. Those discounts didn't happen over Black Friday like they normally do. Over the next few weeks, you can expect to see price cuts on cold weather related or seasonal items like clothes and electronics. If there's incoming merchandise that's got more features and benefits or uh, more technology or new technology on the way this spring. Um, there's going to be a need to clear the inventory that's sitting or that's that's just arrived because it's going to be less valuable. It's going to be less attractive and less viable. Vaccinated patients who suffered severe COVID symptoms had at least one risk factor. That's the finding from a new CDC study. Look at, at more than a million people, only 189 experienced ICU admission or death. Now, those patients had risk factors, including being 65 or older, being immunocompromised, or having underlying conditions with the liver, heart, or kidneys. The U.S. is now averaging nearly 600,000 new cases of COVID infections per day, and that means millions of Americans are getting infected with the virus. So far, the Omicron variant appears to be more mild than previous variants, 
But as Maya Rodriguez tells us, with so many people now getting infected, there are questions about how many might develop long haul COVID symptoms. As the Omicron variant sweeps across the nation, prompting long lines at COVID testing sites, a silver lining. So far, there are fewer hospitalizations and deaths from Omicron than from last year's Delta variant. Our vaccines, especially when combined with our boosters, have remained extremely effective at keeping people out of the hospital. But still, since Omicron began spreading in the U.S. over the holiday season, there have been millions of new COVID infections. This Omicron variant is more transmissible than previous versions. Dr. Bruce Y. Lee is a professor at the City University of New York Graduate School of Public Health and Health Policy. He's been studying and tracking COVID since the pandemic began. Based on the data, it looks like the peak of this current Omicron uh, wave will probably occur sometime uh, in mid-January. By then, millions more Americans could potentially be infected with COVID. But it's what happens in the months after those infections that will need to be looked at closely, including what Omicron might mean in terms of new long haul COVID cases. Long COVID is something that's many times overlooked and not discussed. People are focusing on things like deaths or potentially hospitalizations. Many people tend to forget there is a, a significant percentage of people who are suffering from long COVID. Dr. Lee says with previous variants, there's been some correlation between how severe a COVID case is and how likely that person will become a long hauler. But this is not a super strong correlation, meaning that there have been many cases of people having mild milder symptoms or milder COVID-19 early on, but they continue to have persistent symptoms. Those can run the gamut, including a loss of taste or smell, muscle pains and brain fog, among others. The World Health Organization defines long COVID as having symptoms more than three months after an initial infection, a timeline we haven't reached yet with Omicron. It's not clear what percentage of people who've been infected with the Omicron variant will develop these persistent long COVID symptoms versus other variants. And something that, for Omicron cases, might not become clearer until the spring. I'm Maya Rodriguez. I the clouds have rolled into the Brazos Valley, and that is going to keep things on a little warmer scale for tonight, as that acts like a blanket. But it's still rather cool with temperatures into the 40s and 50s across the area right now. Clouds and radar showing that clouds continue to increase and even a few showers as you head along the coastal bend and then south toward Corpus Christi. This will continue to work its way to the north. And I do think we'll see some showers by midnight or so and then going through the day on Saturday. And we will also be seeing the potential of maybe a little bit of strong activity across the area. It's a low end risk, but there will be the potential for one or two storms to potentially become severe for us. And let's take a look at what we were mainly looking at on a scale of 10. It's not high at all. However, I can't rule out a gusty wind here or there and the possibility of an isolated tornado. I think the better chances will be in southeast Texas toward the Houston area, but we're going to be right on the edge here in Bryan College Station. So that's something we will continue to track for you. And as we take a look at your future track, we will be seeing a couple of showers around through midnight going into tomorrow morning, but it's tomorrow afternoon as the moisture continues to build. We have a chance for again, just isolated to widely scattered showers and thunderstorms from time to time. Again, one or two of those could become strong. I think the better chances will be east of here. Then the rain starts to push away as we move into Sunday as a cold front moves into the area. So for tonight, temperatures will be dipping down into the upper 40s and low 50s. And tomorrow, 60s north, 70s south as a warm front moves into the area. And that's going to bring a chance for a few showers and thunderstorms. Sunday, that begins to go away. Cools off Monday and Tuesday with another chance of rain by Thursday. Delivery drivers across the country are still trying to play catch up, working to get returns and other packages delivered as quickly as they can. Chris Conti shows us the surprise one UPS driver left behind for one new mom recently and how it's been life changing. Becoming a new mom in the middle of a pandemic was far from what Jessica Kitchell had ever planned. The wall started closing in a little bit. Right before Christmas, this Atlanta area resident gave birth to her son, Chancey. 
While everyone is healthy, the holidays and COVID had brought about a particularly profound sense of loneliness. It was first, the first few weeks being in the house, not being able to leave, you know, trying to physically recover has been definitely, you know, had its ups and downs. On one of those rough days recently, Jessica was waiting for a shipment of baby formula. When the doorbell rang, she had expected to just find a box. Instead, she found this gift waiting to be unwrapped. If this is the It's a Boy house. That's UPS driver Dolan Harrell. In the weeks leading up to Jessica's delivery, he had been making plenty of deliveries to the family's house and noticed the baby balloons outside. I hope all is going well with your newborn. So he decided to leave this message. He did not know how much it would mean. I had a, a child around the same time you guys did, and I just hope everything is going good. God bless. Happy holidays. You know, we get deliveries a lot, and I've never had anyone intentionally leave a message. So I, I was blown away, honestly. Like, I really felt like that day he was like an angel that just came to my door. I was hesitant if I was even at the right house, hesitant if I should say something. Dolan really didn't think much of the message he'd left behind. It just stuck with me that, oh, this is a, a house that had a child. But Dolan is also a new dad himself. Can they get away, Debbie? You trying to give him a fist bump? We caught up with the 24-year-old and his son, Devereaux, at a doctor's appointment. It's an ultimate teacher. He's been teaching me a lot of patience. Dolan never expected anyone to see his doorbell cam checkup, and he certainly didn't expect the gifts he'd soon get in return. What's up, baby Chancey? Hey, Miss Kitchen. What's up, Mr. Kitchen? What's up? <laughs> oh, nice to meet you guys. Jessica decided to share the video on social media. Strangers were so moved that they ended up buying out Dolan's entire baby registry, which had been sitting untouched for three months. Him and his fiance had not had a baby shower. They really honestly had not had a lot of gifts given to them besides what their family helped them with. And I cannot tell you how quickly these items got bought up. Completely life-changing, just... Something just totally unexpected, it all came out of the blue. As for that video, which has now circulated around the globe, these two hope that even after the holidays, it can be the kind of gift which is appreciated year round. The fact that he took the time out of his day, we're all so busy and we don't, I think we underestimate the power of kindness. It's free. I'm Chris Conti. The acts of kindness that keep on giving. Thank you so much, Chris. There is more good news that came from this story. Dolan had been working for UPS on a seasonal basis, but after seeing this video, the company decided to hire Dolan full time. Only one in 10 adults is eating enough fruits and vegetables. And the CDC reports even greater disparities among those living in poverty. Dietary guidelines from the Department of Agriculture and Health and Human Services advise two to three cups of veggies and between one and a half and two cups of fruit daily. We're getting a look at how much the use of Botox is rising. Advi owns the company that makes Botox. It reports that in the first nine months of 2021, Botox sales surpassed $1 billion. Compare that to the same time frame in 2020 when there were $600 million worth of Botox sales. One dermatologist tells us her office started to see a substantial rise in patients requesting Botox around mid-2021. We are looking at a lot of patients who've been spending their days working from home and sitting in front of a Zoom camera at all times. And essentially what they're looking at is a mirror of their faces um, all day long, and they're getting to see kind of the subtleties as far as the movements in their face and the lines in their faces. There's also been a large influx of younger patients. Abvi says their average Botox patient is closer to 40 years old instead of 50. But also Dr. Annalise Dawson tells us she's seen patients in their 20s. That's partly an effect from social media, but also there's more trust in these procedures now that they've been around for about 20 years. Now it's become really clear that when those treatments are done very um, precisely and correctly and conservatively, that they actually can produce really natural results um, that don't alter people's faces, but just help to prevent and delay aging. Dr. Dawson tells us there has been no scientific evidence that Botox can cause substantial harm in younger people. Meanwhile, cosmetic reasons aren't the only reason some may opt for Botox. A new report from UC San Diego shows that Botox injections can actually help reduce anxiety. Doctors have also been using Botox to treat migraines, excessive sweating, and jaw clenching. World news tonight is just ahead and we're back in 30 minutes for Carrie HD News at 6. Until then, have a great evening.